So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. He's now upping the ante and suggesting that I extorted him. Well, just when we thought that Steven Crowder's beef with the Daily Wire was over, he decided to seemingly out of nowhere reignite the war, specifically, though, with Candace Owens this time. And we're not simply talking about them taking pot shots here and there at one another on their shows. We're talking about an escalation that's so severe it could literally pit them against each other in court. So very, very big things we're talking about here. And you love to see it, honestly. I love watching these ghouls fight. So let's get to the actual spat. It starts with Steven Crowder accusing Candace Owens of extortion. This is a word that he uses specifically when referencing something that she said. And first, though, he reveals that he and his wife are getting a divorce, something that he's kept private in order to protect his children, according to him. And that might seem irrelevant, but this is a key detail here. So let's watch. Uh, since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Now, let me say on the outset, to be clear, there is no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. It's been the most heartbreaking experience of my life. What I consider to be my deepest personal failure. And just so you know, my opinions on parenting and families have not changed. Um, I've always believed that children need a mom and a dad, that divorce is horrible. And I still believe that children need a mom and a dad and that divorce is horrible. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. So for well over a year, uh, well over a year, in the best interest as well as physical safety of my children, we've decided to keep this issue private and to resolve it uh, privately with the appropriate attorneys, what have you, legal jargon. Now, before we get to the extortion claim, I have to point out that he referenced one party divorce laws in Texas and suggests that he would have unilaterally stopped the divorce from happening if he had the legal capability of doing so. And I find that really weird because in essence he's admitting here that he'd force his wife to remain in the marriage against her will if he could legally do that and that might just be him trying to virtue signal to his evangelical audience who thinks that divorce is a sin because they do but either way it's deeply deeply misogynistic and just cruel but it's very on brand for steven crowder it doesn't surprise me that he would do something like this even to somebody who he loves and he pointed that out multiple times. That being said, though, that's a little bit of a side point. He stressed that keeping the divorce private was essential to protect the emotional and physical safety of his children. And he absolutely has a right to conceal that information from the public. It's not necessarily something that's part of our business. I don't care about that. But he's going to point out that other people in this space knew and threatened to use that information against him, specifically Candace Owens. Here's what he says. Many other people knew about this behind the scenes. Some, not all, but some of them in positions of power, influence, leverage, knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. Stephen has a lot going on, I guess is the best way to say it. He has a lot going on, and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their lives. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to the situation, not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian. I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. You know, maybe if I feel in further defense, some things should be said, or maybe if I feel that the public has a right to understand certain circumstances. Well, my children have a right to privacy. Now, some other uh, issues 
have been, uh, or I should say, uh, inferences have been more pernicious behind the scenes with demands and threats to use this information that they believe would be uh, so publicly embarrassing to me and my wife in a difficult time that it could be used, knowingly putting my children in harm's way. So to those self-styled Christians, conservatives, and allies, well, not in my book. Now, if you find yourself, I don't want to get into details, so this is going to likely be the only time I have to address this or want to address this. If you're asking yourself, hey, did X person or did Y person know? The answer is likely yes, which will be made alarmingly clear as this process of discovery continues. Uh, and it also, by the way, makes me that much more appreciative of those who did know about this and in understanding the best interests of my family, my children, kept their word and used discretion. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Sincerely, I appreciate it. Won't forget it. And uh, I will say that what's in the best interest of my children um, is not internet drama, speculation, certainly not blatant or veiled shakedowns or dragging their father or mother. And I can't be clear on that enough. Or their mother through the mud. And to anyone who tries it, I'm no longer going to pacify, capitulate, or sidestep because I love them a whole lot more than I love you. And I will continue to do whatever is necessary to protect my children, discussing the divorce any further on social media or on this show or in any public space is not what's best for them. I'll be handling this through the proper legal avenues and channels available as a matter of record in which I have more than full confidence so I'd ask that you understand the need for and uh, respect our privacy in what is obviously a pretty tough time. And I hope that none of this has to go any further than that. So make no mistake about it, he is ever so subtly suggesting that he's willing to take legal action against Candace Owens if she continues to speak out against this. So he viewed her tacit reference to his divorce as a threat and if he didn't stop attacking the daily wire in his mind he viewed her comments as well i'm going to spill the beans about your divorce that's how he perceived it and i think that that is a fair way to interpret her comments now i'm not sure if that'll actually hold up in the court of law i think that she has some plausible deniability but at the same time it's not unreasonable to assume from his perspective that she is making a thinly veiled threat here although he suggests that he can confirm that Candace knew for sure, which, I mean, it's likely that she did know, but in that video, he kind of admits that she probably knew, not necessarily bulletproof in the court of law. But when it comes to Candace Owens, she addressed his accusation in video and on Twitter. We'll get to Twitter first. She says, Stephen Crowder accusing me of extortion is so patently insane that it honestly makes me question how there are still people who cannot see how thoroughly undone he has become. This is not stable behavior. He is a man on a spiral, outright bizarre and concerning. If you are going to use your children as human shields to block people from digging further into your divorce, please do so without inserting me into the narrative. To remind people, the video Steven used in his show of me was a video of me responding to Steven's first set of bizarre attacks against the Daily Wire. Steven is not the victim. He never was the victim. He's just a bad person who continues to burn a lot of people. Okay, now to be totally honest, I think that Candace Owens is playing dumb here. I think that it's highly likely that she did know about his divorce and that was her implicitly threatening to leak that news to the public about his divorce to make him look bad if he didn't be quiet about the Daily Wire but I also think that she's right that Steven Crowder is using his kids to shield himself from this in order to cultivate sympathy I guess which is kind of weird like I, I get that protecting your kids is a necessity and I understand how um, you know keeping this from getting into the public sphere is a good thing for your children but at the same time, saying that, or implying rather, that this is going to threaten their physical safety is just bizarre. And I think that she's right about that. So there's, I, I could see both sides of the argument here and not to be offensive or I hate both of these fucking people and hope that they both burn in hell forever. But I mean, you can kind of see how both of them are 
they're both trying to use this, right? They're trying to finesse the situation to their own benefit. Remember, we're talking about inherently dishonest people here. So whenever they lob accusations against each other, it's not unreasonable to automatically assume the worst about both of them here. But the drama doesn't end there because things quickly escalated when she responded on her show and she also threatened legal action, but much more explicitly than Steven Crowder did. That's it. That's the big scary story. I then went onto my platform and I said, pray for Steven Crowder, honestly, because that's what he needs. He needs a prayer. And apparently nobody's answering those prayers right now because he's still acting erratic. He's now upping the ante and suggesting that I extorted him. I will not take that lightly, okay? I am not Hillary Crowder. I am not anybody in his family. I am not going to take somebody going onto his platform and alleging that I either harassed threatened or did anything that would put his children at risk. That is very serious stuff that he is saying. And so what I did this morning after this clip was sent to me is I contacted a defamation lawyer and I am sending Steven Crowder a cease and desist. And I'm going to demand a full-throated retraction to the idea that Candace Owens threatened him or extorted him. And not that I simply did a little math. One plus one equals two. A crazy man doing these sorts of things to his friends obviously means that something is going on personally. Honestly, this time, I'm not even going to suggest that anybody should pray for him. I am so deeply troubled by the idea that he is trying to insert me into this narrative pertaining to his divorce. I'm frankly angry about this. So I'm going to hope that he does the right thing, okay, that he does another one of his live feeds on the exact same platform and via the exact same medium and offers me an apology and takes back every single word that he says. Mm. I'm enjoying this so much. It is all so goddamn delicious. Listen, Candace, I think you should do it. I think you should definitely sue him for defamation. And Stephen, make sure that you also take legal action against her immediately. And let's make sure that we all harden our stances further and involve the legal system so as to make it as ugly as possible. I want them both to lose. I want them both to fight as much as possible. I just, I love watching all of this. I'm, I'm here for the ride. Now, it's difficult to know whose side grifters in their orbit are going to be on, but based on one preliminary response from a stinky motherfucker on the right, it seems as if they're siding with Steven Crowder because the quartering defended Crowder on Twitter and he took a thinly veiled shot at Candace Owens, writing, It's absolutely disgusting that people on the right would use Steven Crowder's divorce as leverage against him, to use it against him to embarrass him. Divorce happens. It doesn't even sound like it was his choice. You expect it from the left, but totally shameful from the right. Yes, because we all know that the left is known for using people's divorces against them it's just it's so good lines are being drawn and if you're on the right you've got to pick a side i'm sorry i don't make the rules they do now look i want to make it very clear that i don't care about either one of these individuals or anyone involved uh the optimal outcome for me and really for american democracy to be clear uh, would be for each of them to inflict the maximum amount of damage on each other so they both hemorrhage as much money and support as they possibly can while dividing their conservative fan bases in the process that's honestly what i want to see and considering the amount of rot that they've inflicted on the brains of Amer of americans with their propaganda i don't feel bad saying that i don't feel as if i'm being overly petty these are bad people we're talking about here and the hate that they've spread towards marginalized people the lgbtq plus community like i don't find it wrong to relish in their misery currently including steven crowder's personal misery the vile hate that he has spewed for years the bigotry that he has espoused on his large platform has literally incited harassment against multiple people including gay people like carlos maza and it made carlos maza suffer for years his phone number was leaked he was harassed for years so the fact that steven crowder's divorce has caused him great pain is just a small taste of the misery that he's inflicted on other people so i've got no sympathy for him and i'd say that i hope this suffering will lead to his enlightenment because, you know, oftentimes there's this trope that, you know, when you suffer through something, you'll come out stronger and have more wisdom. But this individual is not an honest actor, right? It's not like he's going to be enlightened and this experience is going to get him to understand the impact that he has on the world. We're talking about somebody who has paid millions of dollars to lie for a living. So we all know that none of this is going to change him for the better. So I can't feel any sympathy for him. When a normal person goes through an experience like this, they grow. 
They change. They learn more about themselves and their partner. Steven Crowder is incapable of introspection, so I don't expect him to be a better person at the opposite end of this. But with that being said, I'm not surprised that Steven Crowder's wife would leave him because this is a miserable, hateful piece of shit. And he's clearly struggling with homosexuality, bisexuality, or gender dysphoria. And rather than embracing himself, he's choosing to suppress his true nature and attack anyone who's brave enough to be their authentic selves. He's jealous. He's envious of queer people, which is probably why he lashes out against them so much. And furthermore, I've just got to point out that in 2015, he wrote this sanctimonious article for Fox News suggesting that his marriage was oh so special because him and his wife decided to not live together and didn't have sex until marriage. And he wrote, let me preface this column by saying this my wife i have to get used to saying that and i not only waited sexually in every way no we didn't pull the bill clinton and technically avoid sex sex but we didn't shack up as libbins and most importantly we courted each other in a way that was consistent with our publicly professed values we did it right feeling judged i couldn't care less you know why because my wife and i were judged all throughout our relationship people laughed scoffed and poked fun at the young celibate naive christian couple yeah, not so smug now, are we, Steven Crowder? Now, I'm sure that he felt judged because in true evangelical form, this insufferable prick pretended as if not fucking his fiance made him somehow superior to everyone else and he probably wouldn't shut the fuck up about it and made being celibate his entire identity and anyone who didn't agree with him or didn't want to hear about that or didn't do it exactly as he did were probably judged by him. So, by them responding, I'm sure he's saying, oh, well, I felt judged. But really, I know people like this, right? I grew up in evangelical circles. These folks made it seem as if their relationships were better than everyone else's relationships because, you know, they did it the right way, God's way. But it turns out that that doesn't actually matter. And, um, yeah, you were the judgmental prick, and now you kind of have to eat crow. Now you've kind of been proven wrong. In fact, your entire worldview has been proven wrong. But I mean, I can't speak to Crowder's wife, but I can guarantee that she is way better off without him. And I'm sure that she's happier now. And I wish her nothing but the best because Steven Crowder is an objectively terrible human being. And anyone who's not in his vicinity, I think is probably much better. And I hope Crowder continues to stoke right-wing infighting. And I hope that the Daily Wire people respond by escalating. And I hope that all of their little sycophants watch in horror as they both burn each other to the fucking ground. Because again, we are talking about terrible people whose purpose as right-wing propagandists seemingly is to inflict as much pain and suffering on people as they possibly can. So when they get a taste of their own medicine, when karma comes back to bite them in the ass, I don't feel bad for them. So I say, let them fight. I'm gonna come. Gonna come. Ah, ah, ah. Do not come. come. Come, come, come. Welcome, Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. Ah, ah, ah.